lake and how we have been doing uh, the data lake, uh, I think, uh, traditionally and how this uh, term came uh, recently, I mean, in the era of uh, big data and data, uh, you know, cloud and data management. So <clears throat> any organization, <clears throat> you know, has uh, stored their data uh, traditionally in the, you know, their local databases and then, uh, then you know, data warehouse and then, you know, data lake comes into picture whenever we have, you know, different types of data. Uh, so, uh, it's a, if we, we want to define the data lake is a kind of, uh, so data lake is, you know, it's a centralized repository for any organization, you know, to to store the structured or probably and also the semi-structured or unstructured data nowadays earlier when we used the data warehouse then there was a you know kind of structured data but early, nowadays structured unstructured data or, and semi-structured data and they could go on to any scale because uh, we are you know generating uh, you know uh, thousands of terabytes of data on daily basis right so in those scenarios data lake is necessary and um, so data is uh, in data lake the data is going to be stored as is you know without having uh, you know structuring the data as unlike uh, you know we used to do in database and data warehousing and um, so the data is going to be stored as is in uh, data lake and uh, then the you know different processing on on the data is going to happen uh, right from the you know SQL querying or, or you know dashboard reporting and all okay so the, there are different stages of uh, data lake so data ingestion you know the data ingestion from various sources is going to happen then the data is, is getting stored and the process then you know data is you know maybe probably the modified or you know according to the requirement and you know then data exploration and visualization is going to happen so traditionally uh, there was an atl or elt you know uh, elt pipeline uh, we used to do uh, for uh, you know exploration and visualization of the data and uh, now it is you know machine learning and you know ad hoc analytics is there to explore the data basically so let's understand how you know how the data lake looks like in earlier time you know, on premises uh, when the the native you know native infrastructure was there for particular organization and the nowadays when you know data is moved you know to the cloud so let's see uh, let's try to understand so this is a typical uh, you know the cloud uh, not cloud data lake and uh, let's look at the on premises data lake so in on premise data lake the data storage and you know the computation units were in silos actually so different different uh, you know units were there uh, to process the data okay there was not a kind of you know centralized location so then then the things moved to the data warehouse then you know so they have started to build the data warehouse and within data warehouse there were you no know, data mats specific to the you know, uh, department of a particular or line of business. Let's say we have, um, you know, sales, purchase, and, you know, inventory, those kind of line of business are there. And then, you know, respective data mates, and then on top of that, you know, data warehousing was built. Okay. So this uh, picture looks, uh, is, is kind of on premises, uh, data lake, you know, the traditional data lake. Okay. So then the things moved and you know cloud data lake comes into picture so the data is you know getting uh, you know stored from various uh, feeds whether it could be a structured feed or a you know semi-structured or you know unstructured feed then data is moved into a centralized location which is called you know data repository or a, any uh, uh, any place into the cloud and then there would be you know different engines right data processing engines were built on top of that to process the data like spark engine you know spark cluster built on and sql engine various sql engines no sql or you know structured sql engine okay then uh, there are machine learning so data could be you know uh, exploratory data analysis 
would be done and then you know modern data models getting created and then the predictive analysis of those data is happening as part of machine learning and probably the deep learning you know various images getting stored and probably the you know videos you know uh, and you know sounds and videos are and then the deep learning models would be run and then there will be a recommendation system is getting generated nowadays as part of artificial intelligence so this is a full picture of cloud data lake what is happening where okay and if you would like to see the whole soul picture of a data lake as of today is you know a different various data sources and various cloud so let's start from one by one so from traditionally you know the csv comma separated files and you know the json files which is you know portable uh, structure and the xml and then avro and the parquet files and you know, then a maybe flat file so this is the file system one of the kind of feed we we we, we get from in a data lake or in a data warehouse and uh, then you know there are clouds you know sources so every cloud has you know their own different way of storing the data lake like in aws we have a s3 simple storage service you know and uh, in azure we have azure data lake storage adls okay and in gcp you know google cloud platform you know storage so they provide their own uh, data storage place you know object storage place and uh, the data lake is uh, populated from uh, different data data is like you know data from sensors you know and data from uh, you know internet of things so devices different uh, you know devices or from the mobile applications okay and uh, if you talk about social media so so lots of data is getting generated and they are you know getting stored in uh, you know your subscribe and like and you know those share things are getting stored as part of data lake you know, on daily basis in background okay and then there are audio and video files can be stored in the data lake right so data is you know kind of at a, at a single place at a centralized place so uh, it's unlikely uh, it's, it's, it's you know different from earlier time you know when you know data would be placed in silos for a particular organization and it was very difficult to integrate and take the you know insight from the data and then there are you know a magnitude of kind you know of databases sql databases or no sql databases right so this is the kind of whole soul structure of data lakes right so let's understand some uh, important features of uh, why we need data lake basically so so how so what is data lake we understood i mean uh, what are the stages of the data lake you know data lake uh, how it is you know a part of larger data pipeline you know in a particular organization and uh, then we are going to understand why data lake is necessary and you know what are the challenges going ahead so the lower cost of storage so this is very significant actually so uh, when we talk about uh, on premises storage right so first we you know arrange the hardware and then you know top, top of that there is a software so uh, and uh, if we don't need a particular you know uh, data then also you know the the respective cost, cost is going to be you know constant on top of that and then there will be the upgradation of software and you know hardware things uh, on time in timely basis so that was there uh, you know huge structure piece you know whole uh, revenue amount is you know going to go into the maintenance and the storage of the data as part of traditional on premises you know data storage now we have a data lake and which is uh, mostly uh, you know residing into the cloud base so pay as you use pay as we use so this is the uh, this is the model we are uh, you know offered or uh, you know any client or any customer is getting offered from our respective uh, you know cloud services so if it uh, and the elimination of data silos so i was talking about earlier so data silos you know data was spread across the different different units and it was very difficult to integrate the data and uh, you know uh, and the data governance within the departments you know among the departments and between the departments was very difficult and the data security was in 
in, in at stake okay in in those scenarios so uh, the data lake you know eliminates this data silos uh, structure so every kind of data is getting stored in a, in a single and you know single single uh, place of truth you know we call it as a you know single place of truth so every data sent single place of you know storage is going to be provided as part of uh, cloud you know and uh, so and the there is a simplification of data management so if we talk about data growth so we don't have to take care, take care of the hardware you know uh, to uh, to horizontal scale or you know vertical scalability of the disk or you know servers so the, the cloud respective cloud um, uh, cloud you know vendor is going to give the best of scalability and the durability of the data so the durability in at the magnitude of 911 you know 11 nines basically so if you talk about the in, in terms of uh, uh, the number of years so in 1000 years there would be a loss of one byte data if you talk about you know 11 nine durability then there will be a there will be a chances of you know losing of the data in 1000 years one byte of data so that kind of durability we are going to get in you know cloud environments so the data is going to be very secure and safe uh, in cloud and the scalability as it's you know uh, on it's uh, you know very very important and uh, it's very easy to scale okay and the data movement is going to be very very easy because uh, so the single place of uh, place of storage and the data movement uh, you know uh, between on premises and the respective cloud and among the clouds so most of the our applications are going to store at particular cloud and the cloud native application the data is going to be moved up within the you know particular vpn or you know under the network of a particular cloud management system so data movement is very very fast and easier as compared to you know on premises things okay the, the the different kind of things you know data glue and data crawling mechanism and cataloging and indexing uh, these are the uh, these are the you know concepts which which are used as a data management okay so, so and uh, the computation and one more important uh, uh, concept is like you know the separation of data storage and computation so if you if you separate in traditional systems that whenever we have to you know upgrade the system the horizontal scaling right we used to do so the storage and also the compute power is we had we had to add right so if you you know adding one cpu then the storage is also going to come with it and also the the cpu cycles right so the computation and storage so here it, we have you know storage and computation is separated so it is very flexible system we can add the disk as max as possible without you know increasing the cpu you know so the the separation is very very flexible uh, in terms of data management you know and um, and if you talk about computation on top of that data storage so we can think of you know any spark engine or any sql rdbms engine can be running which is as part of cloud system which is as running as you know kind of one hour and then it can be shut down and we are not going to be charged for that shutdown for period or a, uh, you know inactive period so that this is also you know uh, enhances or you know i mean it lowers our you know budget in terms of uh, you know cost okay and um, then uh, we have improved, improved security and governance so there are multiple layers of security on data on rest or data on motion so um, there are multiple layers of security in every cloud you know so if you talk about aws in specific so there are you know there are if you talk about you know s3 bucket then you know bucket policies are in place to secure the data data encryption you know kms services and then the uh, and the data uh, data access to different users is governed by you know identity and access management role you know so the data governance and security is kind of uh, uh, offered very 
and uh, it's, it's easy to believe I mean, I mean that data is going to be very secure you know on those you know different layers of security okay and then offer scalability and durability that we already talked about so as a as a you know client of you know any vendor cloud vendor we are not least concerned about the scalability and durability right so because it offers uh, those things automatically okay and going forward the challenges are going to come in data like as only the security you know so because the data is going to be placed on you know a cloud environment and uh, and the kind of uh, public environments and we have to make sure that the security is you know um, security thing is you know established very very strictly and uh, there should not be any you know data hack so this is going to be challenging because lots and lots of applications and lots and lots of people are moving onto the cloud and is, so the security of the data is very very important this is the one uh, challenges we can see otherwise uh, but, but uh, at the same time you know there are different layer of security in every, uh, every you know in each and every cloud system so yeah we are going to store the data uh, in data lake so this is all about data lake thank you so much